So for this one, we're going to be using a cylinder. So press Shift A, go to Mesh, grab yourself a cylinder. I'm going to switch this vertices to a 64 right here. Then we're going to right click and shade smooth. Then if you go over here to the normal settings and this triangle shape here and hit normal, check auto smooth so that we keep our edges. Then if we go to our camera view, select our camera, we can switch the focal length to something like a 90 if we want to get up close, or we can say like a 70 to stay a, dis a decent distance away. Then with this selected, we're going to go ahead and go to rendered preview and uncheck scene world to give it and give the strength to a one. I'm using this forest HDRI because this is a tree bark. Then if we go over here to render settings, if you're in EV, go ahead and check ambient inclusion, bloom and screen space reflections. If you're in cycles, then you're good to go. Then head over here to shading. Make sure you have a 3D viewport and a shader workspace open. Just go ahead into the rendered settings and make sure that you have them the same. Then press new and we're going to call this our pine tree bark. Like this and we're good to start. Oops, I forgot an E. So the first step is we'll press shift A and search up a Voronoi texture like this. I'm just going to place that right here. Then I'm going to press control T to get this. If you, that doesn't work, go to edit preferences and go to add-ons and search up the node wrangler add-on and then you'll check the box and you'll get all the shortcuts and everything then take the object from the texture coordinate and move it into the mapping we're going to grab this mapping and coordinate and move it this way then we're going to press shift a and add another mapping node and have that one going in between the first mapping node and the voronoi texture the reason we have this is because we're going to be doing some stretching with the voronoi texture then we control shift and left click on this voronoi texture we're going to switch the scale on this mapping to a 0.2. And this is going to help give us a tree bark effect later on. Then on this Voronoi texture, we're going to be switching the settings on this as well. We're going to be switching this from F1 to smooth F1, then the scale to a 15. Like that. And if we want a better angle, we can always pan around in the viewport if you don't want to go straight to your camera. Then for the next step, we're going to press Shift A, add ourselves a color ramp, from the search bar like that, put the Voronoi into it, and then on this uh, black and white, we're going to flip them like this, put the black on the very end, then this white we're going to position at a 0.25, like this, just so that we get some nice contrast going in here. This is going to be our bark shape, essentially. Then we're just going to factor this into our bump, and I'm going to go ahead and organize this a little bit better. So I'll hit Shift A, search up a bump node like this. Take this color, put it into the height of the bump, and then take this normal and put it into the normal of our principled shader, like so. Now I'll just organize this a little bit better so we have more space for this next part. Where we're gonna add a noise texture, so Shift A, search, and go to noise texture right here. We're gonna take the vector of the first mapping node right here and put it into here. Then control shift and left click to preview, like so. We're gonna switch the scale to a 10, detail to a 16, and the roughness to a 0.6, and the distortion to a 0.1. This is gonna be factoring into some bump for us. And we're gonna press shift A, search up a color ramp right here. Then on the value for this color ramp, we're just gonna take this black and move it to a 0.6. Then this white will be moving to a 0.9, like so. And this is factoring into the roughness right here. So this color will go into our roughness. Now we factor this into the bump. So we'll press Shift A, search up another color ramp, like so. Take the factor from the noise texture into the color ramp and Control Shift left click to preview. Then we're going to take the value on this black and make it a 0.05. Doesn't make a huge difference, but it does make a slight change. Then we'll press Shift A, search up another bump node, like this. I'm going to put this bump node in between the other bump node and the shader. Then I'm going to take the color from this guy and switch it into the height of this bump node. Now at the end is when we'll play with the strengths on these, but for now we're just going to leave them both at one because it's not too big of a deal until later. Then this next step, we're going to be factoring in what we want to do with the color. And for the color on this, we're going to have the orangey pollen stuff, and we're also going to have the moldy greenish stuff, and then we'll, of course, have the normal wood bark. So we're just going to 
select all of this right here, the texture coordinate mapping, Voronoi, color ramps, that stuff. Hit Shift D and move that up here. This is going to play into some masking for our colors and things like that. So, all we have to do next is press our Shift A, add ourselves a noise texture, like so. Take the vector from the first mapping into the new noise texture. Control Shift left click to preview. Change the detail to a 16. And that's it for this noise texture, other than hitting Shift A and adding a color ramp. And then we're going to take the white on this guy and move it to a 0.565, like this. And this is going to be playing into the pollen where we want that. So next, we're just going to select both of these and press Control, Shift, and D and duplicate them down here. Then on this noise texture, though, after I preview the color ramp, we're going to take the scale, move it to a 15, and the roughness to a 0.85. We're going to take this black and move it up to a 0.44, like this. Then this white will put it at a 0.55, like so. So we have some nice contrast going in where we want our pollen and such. But we don't want these to be factoring in all over the place, so we're going to be mixing them up. By hitting Shift A, search up a mix RGB node right here. Then we're simply going to check clamp on this. Take the Voronoi texture color ramp into the factor. And then we're going to take the color from the bottom into color two, and the color from the top into color one. And then we can control shift and left click this mix node. We can see the mask of where we want the pollen to be affecting and how much pollen is going to be there. And that is shown by the black. Like so. Anyways, the next step is going to be doing our colors. And to do that, it's really simple. We're just going to hit shift A and we're going to use one noise texture for all of them right here. Put the vector into the vector of the noise texture. Then we'll press Shift A, and we will be adding a color ramp. This is go first. We will do our tree bark color. So we'll move the factor into this color ramp, like so. Then the scale on this noise texture, we're just going to move to a 50, the detail to a 16, and the roughness will leave as well as the distortion. Then we're just going to hit the plus sign right here and add a third stop. Then on this black. I will go ahead and give you the hex value for that one. I'll read it off twice. So the hex value is an 898179. Again, that is an 898179. Uh, Again, that's 898179, like that. And you have your first color. Then the second stop, we're going to put at a 0.425 on the position, like this. Oops, not that one. This middle one, 0.425. Then the hex value on this one, it is a 635. 654 again that is a 635 654 like so and then this last one we're going to leave on the very end and the hex value for this is a 433 e3e again that is a 433 e3e like so and now we have the tree bark color so the next step is going to be adding in the pollen color so i'm going to hit shift a search up another color ramp then I'll take the noise texture and factor it into the color ramp like this, control shift and left click to preview. Then the colors on this are gonna be left on the very ends, but the black is gonna be changed to a hex value of 9A3424. Again, that is a 9A3424. Oop, that's a 7A3. 9A3424. There we go. And that is our first color. Then the second color is gonna be switched to a hex value of 8F7942. Again, that is an 8F7942, like so. And now we have our pollen color. Next, we're going to factor in our mold color. And that is a color ramp as well. Take the factor from this noise texture into the color ramp. And we'll go ahead and add a third stop. Then this black right here, we're going to change that to a hex value of B3C1C2. Again, that is a B3C1C2, like so. Then the second stop, we're going to leave directly in the middle. This is going to be more of a bluish green color. The hex value is going to be a 729591. Again, that is a 729591. 729591, like so. Then this very last value is going to be our greener blue, or more of a blue. And it's going to be a hex value of 464C5A, again that is 
C5A, like so. And if we control shift and left click, we now have the color of our mold and this distribution. Now we have to figure out where we want this, and we've already done some of that for the pollen. So I'm just gonna press Shift A, search up a mix RGB right here. Take this color and move it into our factor here. Then I'm gonna take the color from the bark, put it into color two, the color from the pollen into color one. And if we control shift and left click on this guy, we can see that we have our bark and we have our pollen. As always, you can play with these values in here. You can be more bark, less or more pollen, or less pollen, more bark. Things like that, depending on how colony you want your bark to be. Anyways, now we have to factor in our mold. And to do that, we just need to create one more mask. So I'm going to move this up a little bit. And I'll press Shift A, search up one noise texture like this. Take the vector from our mapping and to the noise texture. And then Shift A, search up a color ramp. Take the factor from the noise texture into the color ramp and Control Shift left click to preview. Change the detail to a 16 and the roughness to a 0.8. Then we're going to be taking these values on this, moving the white to a 0.69, like so, and the black to a 0.525. And this is where our mold is going to be, where the white is showing up. Then I'll simply press Shift A, grab ourselves a color ramp, I mean a mix RGB node right here. We are going to take the color from this color ramp and put that into the factor. Then we'll take the color from this mix node and put it into color one, and the color from our mold into color two. If we control shift and left click, we now have our mold coloring mixed in with everything else, which is exactly what we want. As you can see, we have some nice looking colors here. Then we just simply take this color right here and put it into the base color of our principal shader. Then we control shift left click our principal shader now, we can see that it's looking like this, and this is not very good. The bump is way, way too strong. It's even making my computer a little bit laggy with the reporting. So the next step is simply going to be to fix that. So this first bump node down here, we're going to switch the strength to a 0.5. And this second bump node, we're going to switch the strength to a 0.4. And once you've done that, we can go over here and head to the layout. And we can pan around a little bit. And we have our finished pine tree bark material. And I think it looks pretty good. My viewport's a little bit laggy, so it's not showing up white so prominently. But for a texture that doesn't work with any displacement at all, it's looking pretty darn good. Especially if we go to solid here, this is a perfectly smooth surface, and then we add in our texture, and we've got some nice tree bark, like so. This is a pretty close up view, and so the further you go, if you go far away, you can definitely tell that it looks really good. It's just if you get super close to it, then it looks kind of bad, but I don't know why you'd ever be this close to it in one of your renders. But yeah, anyways, that is the finished material and hopefully y'all enjoyed and can find use for it in your renders for your pine trees. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you have any materials that you don't know how to create that you'd like to learn how to create in the future, make sure to drop those in the comments below and I'll figure out a way to make it and do a tutorial on it. But yeah, uh, hopefully you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.